Hello friends, welcome to Project X. In this tutorial, we will build a payroll management system using ASP.NET. So in this tutorial, we will not discuss about basics and understandings of C Sharp ASP.NET, but we will only focus on the project itself. So you can learn the basics following the projects also. So let's get started. So here we will use Visual Studio 2013 professional version. First, let me tell you about little about the project. What we will be doing? So a payroll management system is used in almost any organization. So uh, there will be a database employee database of employee where all the details of every employee will be stored, like how much is their basic pay what are the allowances they are provided etc and by that allowances their overall salary will be calculated so we have a database of employee we have all the information regarding their pay and we will need to create a new interface for the admin to log in who will generate the payroll so that will be a login based page so let's get started. First, we will create a new project. We will select web and it says Visual Studio 2012 that because that's the last version of ASP.NET released. So we'll select ASP.NET empty web application and we will name our project payroll. Okay. So it will take some time to get created. Okay, as it is loaded, you can see various information about this project here. What what URL will it be? Will it use for displaying the web page? If any SSL is integrated or not, and you can see the project structure here. The most important file here is web.config because here all the configurations about your project will be stored here. You can see the target framework is 4.5 as we are using ASP.NET framework 4.5. And also we can include many other tags, many other libraries here according to our need. So we will come to that later. The first part of building any project should be building the database. So let's create our database. Right click on payroll. This is the project name payroll. Then add. Here you can see a new type of folder which is called ASP.NET folder. You can see several items here. Even if these are normal folders in our directory but it acts as a special purpose in a, any ASP.NET project like as app data will be used for storing database objects app code is storing uh, generalized code frameworks so we will use app data our app data folder is created here now we can use a SQL Server database here as SQL Server database is already integrated in Visual Studio we can use it here right now so right click add SQL Server database we'll give our database name payroll okay Uh, it will take some time to create the database let's wait for that ah. as the database is created you can see the database name is payroll.mdf here mdf stands for metadata file all the information regarding this database will be stored in this file so double click on that and our server explorer on the left hand side will be opened Apart from that, you can see various information about that 
database. The most important thing is this connection string. Using this string, you can connect to this database from any machine in the same network or any other application. So we will come to that. First, let's create the database. You can see under the our database, there are various items. We can create tables, we can create views, functions, stored procedures, etc. according to our needs. But we need a table first. So let's create a table. Add new table. Here ASP.NET provides a very useful and interactive interface for creating a database which you can use to create database without writing a single line of SQL query. So you can see the interface is here where you can put your column name, column types etc. and right under it you can see the SQL which is generated. So we will give our table a name. Let's get our employee tables. So, what will our employee table include? We must have an ID. I will use uh, lowercase letters for column names because it's easy to type and it's not ambiguous letter in the project. It will not be ambiguous you will find. So our id this data type is always int will not allow nulls because it is our primary key and we want our id to be generated automatically when we insert an entry or an employee. So we need to write here identity 1 comma 1. This 1 comma 1 stands for the id will start from 1 uh, as the first ID will be 1 and as we insert a new row the new ID will be incremented by 1 so it will come as 1 2 3 4 like that so our first column is created so now let's create our second column its employee name you can give in care let's say 20 not null uh, as you can see the corresponding SQL is automatically generated here as very handy. So we need the employee's post or role because according to the employee's role his basic pay and other allowances will be generated. So we give our role in care. Uh, let's keep it 20 to be safe. That's all we need for our project, but you can also include address, phone number, etc. But that is irrelevant in this project. So let's create our table. Remember, until you up click on this update uh, button, your table will not be created. So when you click the update button, it will prompt for an create table or update database command. So click on that and you can see the pro progress here and it says update completed successfully. So if you refresh the server explorer and expand table, you can see our employee table is created. Okay. So now let's create our salary table where all the information of the salary corresponding to a role will be stored. So add new table, give this table name salary, here we don't need uh, id and also we don't need id as primary key so we'll delete that primary key and we need we need we have distinct roles at a company and those roles will act as a primary key. So we need to give the same data type and same name of the column as we gave it in employee table. So in care 20. Make it our primary key. Now let's 
give all the salary information. Let's give the basic pay. We will give it a numeric value. Uh, let's say a seven digit total and two digit decimal. As you can guess uh, of this notation, the total length of this total digits of this field will be seven and we will allow two dec two digits after the decimal. So like you can write one, two, three, four, five dot five zero like that will not allow null so our basic pay is created but we also need to create other allowances tables let's get that we'll give dearness allowance as allowances are calculated on certain percentage of the basic pay so we'll store the percentage here so we we'll need an int we don't need a decimal or we can use decimal this percentage also can be decimal um, let's give 3 let's give 5 and after decimal 2 digits similarly create HRA house rent allowance numeric similar 5 to and we'll give another field other allowances whatever medical facilities and other things the employees using it will go under this category support it numeric two will not allow nulls so our table structure is ready and we can just put update and our salary table is created okay so our basic two tables are created and you can see these two here but we need for validation we need to link these two tables because these employee tables are using this role field which must be included in this fields data suppose our role here in salary is manager but the employee are not having any role named manager it is not allowed here whatever the employee will have a role means he is a manager that should be present here so we need to give a foreign key preference here so we'll give role foreign key references. This pretty common SQL structure. I hope you know that. References our table name that is salary and the field name is role. So we will update the table and the foreign key will be updated. So it's ready. So our initial database is ready. I am not considering an admin database. Uh, we will create a static admin portal for that using the login and password facilities but we will not use a separate table database obviously it is recommended that you use an admin separate admin database with various privileges but for our simplicity of the project we will remove that so our database is created and we will head to our page creation so see you in the next video